Welcome to episode three of Fan OCC, or Original Creature Concepts. Uh, my name is Marcus Winnie, and I am a creature character artist. And uh, in today's video, we're going to be having a look at a concept by Antoine Verne, named a Hipporg. And I'm going to try and do some due diligence and try to create his Hipporg using my style uh, of concepting, which is in ZBrush, Keyshot, and Photoshop. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it as close to his as possible. If you want, please look at his stuff online, check out the links below. Antoine Verne is a great artist and really, really cool stuff online. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being subscribers. And uh, if you can, please like, share and subscribe to this channel. It really helps. I'm still trying to hit that 100K mark. And uh, with your help, I think I could do it. So with that being said, let's get into ZBrush. So starting off inside of ZBrush, uh, I started off with a Z-Sphere model and then Dynameshed it, uh, took a selection tool out and started to split the model up into manageable chunks. Uh, I'd started by decapitating the head and then also uh, taking off the arms and the legs and the tail. This makes it easier later on to sculpt individual pieces rather than having to sculpt one big piece. And then you can also uh, make sure that you can uh, use Dynamesh in areas that need more topology and in some areas that needs less topology. It also makes it easier to manipulate the model before uh, committing to of the final model. So today's concept is coming from an Antoine Verne Caron, um, a senior creature artist. And uh, the piece that it's called a hippo core, hippog, a hippog, <laughs> uh, some sort of crazy creature that looks kind of like a mole rat with uh, a hippo body. Um, which I think is what the inspiration was for this, this creature. And uh, I've actually worked and known Antoine Verne for a long time and uh, he is a good friend of mine and I just want to thank him for letting me use his concept in in the, uh, this video. Uh, if you want you can follow his work in the links below and uh, so to, right now getting back to the concept I'm just uh, working on getting some muscle groups down on my character making sure that I have some interesting shapes still. It's all very, it's all still uh, split apart the model. I don't want to mm. rush into putting the model together too quickly. I want to take my time and, you know, make sure all the shapes are correct before I dedicate myself to a combined model. Uh, if you're interested in the sculpt or the concept, uh, I would highly recommend going and seeing Antoine Verne's art station. He has some amazing sculpts and amazing creatures on there. Um, his dragon is probably one of the best ones I've seen. And uh, he, he's just a really talented artist. Uh, right now, just working on getting some of these leg shapes down, um, giving it muscle where it should be muscle, and then defining some extra muscular and skin parts to the character. Now, I don't like to uh, add too much detail at this point. I like to keep it loose. Uh, I'm just adding or well, inserting the eye right now as a placeholder. And then what I'll do is just sculpt around the eye some basic detail, just so I know uh, what to do later on. I like to keep moving around my model as much as possible. And I highly recommend that people do that themselves uh, is, is to constantly move around the model. Don't get stuck in one place too long. Uh, if you find yourself getting stuck in one place too long, then maybe take a break um, and, and come back to it. But if you stay in one place too long, you'll get tunnel vision and you'll just detail that one area far too much uh, and then forget about the rest of the model. So keep it going, keep it moving, keep moving around the model as fast as much as, as, much as you can in these early stages. And also make sure to always check your silhouette of your model. That makes shape that makes sense with the shapes that you're trying to create. You don't want to be too <clears throat> over over compensating on one area and then forgetting the rest, or uh, 
making it look uneven with your silhouette. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well. And just using the dam standard now to block in some of those more defined areas on the legs or the muscle groups. And uh, if you if you find yourself creating a creature from, from your memory or if you, if you don't have references, then just block in what you would think would look like uh, with the muscle groups there. It's always good to have references. I always have a reference uh, up, up on my screens, on my other screens to refer back to. But uh, with some sculpts that you don't have references, it's good to just, uh, you know, make it look interesting if you don't know what the shape of the, the muscle groups is. If it's a fantastical creature or a fantasy creature, then it's easier. But if it's an anatomically correct one, then you're going to need references uh, a lot. So a lot of times when people ask me how long does it usually take to sculpt one of these characters or creatures, and for this one it took me 3 hours and 38 minutes to sculpt it, and that includes posing as well as texturing or poly painting inside a ZBrush. And then it took a further 23 minutes inside a key shot to render it, and then uh, 35 minutes in Photoshop to finally composite it. And that's a typical amount of time that I try to keep with these, these sculpts of mine. Uh, again, these are visual representations or concepts of what I, I think the creatures should look like or how the creature should be portrayed. Uh, you could take these creatures further, obviously, or these sculpts further in your own time and retop of them, get way more detail in it and, and uh, texture it really nicely and render it really nicely using other programs. But for me, I just want to make some really cool concepts and get people interested in sculpting, texturing, and uh, compositing their, their creatures uh, for portfolio use. And uh, right now, back to the sculpt, we're, we're just opening up the mouth using this uh, technique where you take away the lower jaw from the upper jaw, you rotate it slightly outwards, and you've got yourself uh, an open jaw. Uh, then I'll just go around and detail it a little further using damn standard and clay brush uh, to get some detail in there, some little bit more detail. As you can see, my brushes are now getting smaller as the details are coming out more on my creature. And that's how I tend to normally sculpt. So big forms first, then medium forms, and then the smaller details later on. And then if there's time, a finer, finer details inside of ZBrush, but uh, there's not always enough time to, to do the, the really fine detailing stage. So just having a look at the concept that we have uh, as we sculpt some more in the background right now, I'm just adding some of the teeth. Um, what really interested me in this concept was the, the face. Uh, it kind of reminded me a lot of the mole rats from Fallout or Fallout 3 or 4, depending on which game you, you guys probably played. And um, it's just got this really gnarly looking face and I really enjoyed uh, the look of it. So I, I tried to, I'm trying to capture that as much as possible. And right now on the model itself, I'm just adding in the teeth and then going in with the dam standard <clears throat> and adding some, some basic detail around the teeth area. And uh, yeah, so just the whole, I, the whole face just captured me <clears throat> really quite instantly when I saw the concept and I thought that'd be something cool to, to try and recreate in my uh, in, in one of my own styles as well as the the eye the eye that looks like it's dead but it looks like it's blind sort of thing going on and um, I like the way also that it it sort of starts off really detailed and then blends off into like a very quick draw uh, concept it really shows a lot of life with it <clears throat> so looking at the sculpt i'm now going in and adding even more detail to the face uh, it's pretty much the same recipe as everything that i do i try to keep this brush set to a very minimum bare minimum when sculpting i don't like to use too many different types of types of brushes uh, there is some cases where i will use some specific brushes mainly ones that i either create or alphas uh, on a brush that helps with the detailing at a later stage. And uh, as we're going along, you can see I'm starting to to really get a good looking forms on my on my body of my character. Uh, it's all still separate pieces, but uh, we'll eventually 
be at a good point where we can merge them all together. I think that's where we are now in the video. We are merging the model together and we're just going to go around and clean up those areas where the uh, models were merged because they're going to need some little bit of cleanup, a little bit of sculpt work to define the muscles that join together and uh, those, those, those areas basically. As you can see where the tail was, there's a bit of a jagged line, so just smoothing it out using the clay buildup, not using smooth brush too much. I don't like to use a smooth brush too much. It's uh, it's a good tool, but it also hinders you a lot because it gets rid of detail. And the last thing you want to do when you're sculpting is getting rid of the detail. Uh, when you use the clay buildup to smooth a, in a way that you use the plus and the minus version of it, the add and subtract, you can actually smooth out areas in, in that way. And you also get nice sort of texture on your model at the same time. So it's good to try not to use the smooth brush too much, only in some very difficult areas maybe. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend not using the, the smooth brush too much. So now I'm just adding, now that I have, sorry, the, the muscle tone down and I'm, I'm happy with the way the muscle looks, I'm going to go in using a damn standard, a standard brush and the pinch brush and the move brush, I'm just going to add some sort of loose skin. Uh, this actually makes the character come more alive because you're adding fatty, fatty uh, deposits to the model as well as loose skin, where there would be loose skin in those sort of difficult areas of the body. Um, it, it, it sort of helps uh, to visualize this creature as a real creature. Uh, a lot of people skip the stage of adding uh, fat and skin, loose skin on their creatures or characters, and it's a little bit of a detriment to their work because if you don't add that realism to it, it, it actually does show in the final result. So I would recommend spending time uh, making sure you, 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 you do that sort of extra step in your, in your creatures. So what I love about using DynaMesh as a sort of 90% of my work uh, workflow is that you, you're not sort of nailed down to real good topology. You can re-DynaMesh as many times as you like and <clears throat> make your topology look clean and then keep sculpting and keep sculpting and keep sculpting and not have to worry about clean topology. Uh, it, it, it just really helps to make things easier really and uh, right now I have behind the scenes I have retopoed and projected the model onto the cleaner version uh, I'm sure if you buy one of my tutorials you'll you'll see the stage in in it uh, where I do the retopoing I, I normally do it off screen because it's kind of boring to watch and it takes forever so uh, if you really want to see that then there are plenty of tutorials out there on how to project detail to a low res model or a cleaner topology um, model. And I normally sort of uh, take my time with this stage and just add some fine details. Now that I can go up to a high level subdivision level, I have more topology to play with, which means more detail that I could add to my creature. Uh, right now I'm just using a dam standard. I'm really getting in there with some of those cuts to the so wrinkles as well as some of the jawline and stuff like that really defining key areas uh, the nose the eyeball the sort of eye socket as well and um, given some real character now so as i mentioned before uh, this stage is very very important you want to slow down your your pace of work and really take your time to get in there and detail these these pieces these key areas to your model and, and really sell the, the sort of creature now for me i enjoy this part and i i love doing it some people can spend months just detailing a creature i prefer to do uh details on key areas of a creature as well as give it an overall sort of detailing stage and then uh, take it into Photoshop or uh, yeah into Photoshop and do the rest of the detailing there because it's a concept art piece it doesn't need to have that much detail it just needs to sort of 
give the impression of detail. And right now I'm just doing just doing that. I'm, I'm adding some key lines in the foot and then some key lines in the body, just emphasizing where uh, the muscle groups are and then also emphasizing some of the key wrinkles in the skin which comes later on i start to add a lot more wrinkles into the skin just to define them a little bit more as well i normally let the alphas do the majority of the work the alphas that i, I use on this creature will do the majority of the work i think they're going to come up now as you can see i've got a couple of different skin alphas that will uh, just add detail to the surface of the skin and it's a quick and dirty way to make your character look more detailed than it is. Um, it's not, not nothing wrong with doing it this way. Uh, you could sit there and sculpt skin wrinkles to your you know, heart's desire, but it's just going to take forever. Um, we use alphas to speed up this process, as well as get rid of that blank canvas type look to your creature. So you can go in with a damn standard afterwards or a, or a standard brush and just detail between the alpha um, alphas that you're using. So you'll see in a minute, I just I do just that. I, I go in with the damn standard and a standard brush and I just enhance some of those little key areas in the alphas that I've used. Here we are using a damn standard, just picking out some more lines and wrinkles. And because we don't have a blank canvas anymore, we have actual texture on our model. We can we can emphasize them a little bit more and you know add to it. Uh, it's a quick and dirty and cheap way to do it, but it it works for conceptual uh, designs. So you see, I'm just using the standard brush and I'm emphasizing some of those wrinkles underneath the, underneath the neck there. And then the damn standard and the standard brush together. Just some key parts to the, to the model. Because sometimes the alpha will actually make your model look uh, sort of flat when you use too much. So you have to go back in and you have to detail a little bit more just to get those key areas out. And uh, that's pretty much it for the actual sculpting stage of it. Uh, when I return, we'll be looking at the painting uh, stage, uh, poly painting stage, and I'll just run you through quickly how I go about doing that inside of ZBrush. Um, but I'm gonna leave you now to enjoy the rest of this. So I'll return in one second. <laughs> So after the detailing stage, I tend to go for the poly painting before going into the posing. Uh, for this, I normally tend to use the skin shader material because it gives the best results when it comes to poly painting uh, your character. And then what I'll, what I'll do is I'll flood the model with a base color and then go in with a standard brush and just start to paint in the different tones. Uh, I'm not trying to get perfect colors and perfect textures inside a ZBrush. This is kind of just a, easy way to get colors onto your model uh, and then the rest of it will be fixed inside of Photoshop or inside of Keyshot as well. So I'm just trying to get some interesting colors down for my creature, uh, not looking to be too precise on anything. Uh, right now I'm just adding in the mouth texture or the colors in the, in the mouth and then uh, I'll flesh out with some extra dark patches under the eyes uh, and some dark areas. Just try to get a good tonal values onto my creature. It's all using very basic texture brushes, uh, the standard brush with no alpha, standard brush with an alpha, um, that comes with ZBrush, uh, and then uh, just painting over the top, trying to get a nice 
even distribution of color on my character. So once the poly painting is done, I will then go into the posing stage of this character and uh, I'll try to match it to the concept as much as possible uh, using transpose tool. And I think that's gonna come up in a few seconds now. So just give it a minute and uh, here we are. So I hit the transpose tool. I normally like to put mine on a layer inside when I'm doing the transpose tool because then I can turn off and turn on the layer and get back to the T-pose that I had. Uh, this just helps to keep everything nice and tidy. Uh, but right now I'm just using the masking brush and the gizmo to rotate the geometry uh, to try to match the pose of the concept in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, this is a very tedious task uh, of the concept, but if you don't have a interesting pose or if you just have a simple T pose, it can be a little bit boring to look at when it's a, a concept piece. Uh, if you're showing off your character in various uh, views, a T pose will be fine, but because we want to wow people when they see this and we want the director or the art director to be intrigued or, or happy with the result uh, and to give this character a little bit more of a character, we can then we, we tend to use uh, transpose to pose it really quickly uh, inside a ZBrush. You can go in to Maya and do the whole rigging system. You've even got rigging systems inside a ZBrush, but I find this to be the quickest way to actually create a pose for your character. Just using the transpose tool to, to get the, the result, result you like. And uh, I did speed it up a little bit because it's very long. So, um, that was just a very quick showing of using the T, the transpose tool inside a ZBrush. And then you can go ahead and just manipulate a little bits here and there with the move brush on your model, just to even out. And that's it for ZBrush. So when we return, we'll be inside a key shot and I'll show you how I go about rendering. Hey guys, if you're interested in learning how to sculpt and composite characters, then visit my online stores for in-depth tutorials, models, brushes, and more. Just follow the links in the description box below. Also, if you enjoy this content, then please like, share, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Now, let's get back to the video. So, after we've finished inside ZBrush, we're gonna send this off to Keyshot using the bridge to Keyshot. Um, where we'll start to render it and then render out all the passes to take into Photoshop and composite. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time inside a key shot explaining how this works because I have a tutorial online uh, where you can go and you can buy it and watch how I create uh, a composite using Keyshot and Photoshop. And it runs you through step by step how to do it. It's the same steps that I use in this one, it's just a different character. But I highly recommend that you go and check that out. Uh, so, essentially, what I'm doing. I'll just give you the brief rundown. So I'm adding materials, I'm adding some textures, then I'm adding back, backgrounds, environment lighting, and then taking that into Photoshop with some material passes like your ambient occlusion, reflection, your rim lights, stuff like that, into, into Photoshop to composite later on. So essentially what I'm trying to do is just try to get a really good baseline inside a key shot. Uh, so it's kind of like an 80% there, sort of finished uh, inside a key shot. And then inside of Photoshop is where the magic happens. And all I do is just make, make the, the image stand out more than it is now. So I'm going to leave you now to watch the rest of this. And uh, we'll see you inside of Photoshop in just one second. So after Keyshot, we bring all the images inside the Photoshop and we start to composite our image. Now I'm not going to spend too much time going over all the nitty gritty that I did for this creature inside of Photoshop. Uh, it, if you want, you can go and grab those, that tutorial I mentioned before and it will run you through all the processes that I'm going through right now. Uh, but essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this image look really good uh, in, you know, to show off to a client 
uh, or to a portfolio piece that you want. And uh, it's, it's actually good that I had a concept uh, that was already hand drawn for me. So I didn't really have to worry too much about the background or giving a sense of environment because I could just copy what the concept had. And that is really cool. But when you have to make up your own background and interesting background, it's a lot more difficult. But for something like this, for a creature, you kind of want him to stand out from the background anyway. So uh, try to keep the background to a minimum and don't draw the attention away from the character or creature. That's the number one rule of this. You don't want the creature to hide or blend in with the background. You want it to be straight in front of you and you can see the best parts of it straight away. Uh, that's what really sells a concept piece. And uh, right now, just using some random textures from the internet uh, to enhance my creature. Now, remember, I couldn't do all the detail inside ZBrush and I was gonna do more of it later on in Photoshop. Well, this is it. I'm just using internet images to help sell this creature even further. And uh, essentially that's that's it. I mean, we, we just use all the, the renders from Keyshot we multiply them, we then take images from the internet and we, we put them on top and we blend them in and use them sparingly. Don't use overdo it. You don't ever want to overdo your concepts. Uh, otherwise, you could just destroy the whole image. As the old saying goes, less is more. And that's exactly what you want out of your concept. Less work, more result. But you don't want to overdo it. Um, there's a plenty of people that overdo their concepts. Uh, and, and try too hard and uh, that sort of destroys the overall image that you're trying to go for. Um, I think this has turned out to be quite a cool little concept that I've created using Antoine Vernet's concept as an uh, inspiration and uh, I just want to thank him again for letting me use this and uh, if you want you can go check his stuff out there's um, uh, links in the description box below uh, but I've just Want to say thank you again to him and also thank you to everyone of my patrons as well as my followers on youtube and uh, if you feel like you've learned or seen some great things on my station on my uh, channel then please like share and subscribe uh, i am trying to hit that 1000 mark um as a goal i set myself so it'd be really cool if i could reach that this year at some point and with your help we can achieve that goal so please uh, go ahead and like, share, comment, subscribe, all those other things. Uh, I want to thank Antoine Vernet for letting me use his concept again. Go check his workout in the links below. Uh, if you have questions, then I can answer them. Just put them in the comment section. I'll try to get to as many people as I can. It's a hard task to do all the editing of the videos and, and to create things at the same time. So I'm trying my hardest. Uh, also, you can go online to my online stores and my social medias, and you can go and buy uh, the models, tutorials, brushes, etc. Uh, that will help you out in your own concepts. Hopefully, these videos are good, uh, good, and uh, you've learned something. And please stay tuned for episode four next month. So I'll see you there. Take care.